Hi there, Dave Carter here at the IMDb studio in Toronto 2019, and I'm now joined by the director of A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Marielle Heller. Great to see you, Mari. Thanks so much for being here. Great to here. see you too. Thank you for having me. Of course. Am I correct that essentially your friendship with Colin Hanks led to his dad, Tom Hanks, being in this movie? Sort of, yeah. It wasn't in any way intentional, but yes, I met Tom at Colin's kid's party, I think, and okay. um, we started talking, and he actually was talking about this, this article that had been in the New York Times about women filmmakers, and I said, oh yeah, I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, wait, what, you are? Who are you? <laughs> and I said, oh, well, I directed this. At that point, I had just made Diary of a Teenage Girl, and I said I made this movie, and he was like, oh, well, I need to see your movie. And he went and watched my movie, and then we had a meeting, and, and then we formed a really nice relationship where we were kind of trying to find something we wanted to work on together, and we kept in touch sort of over the years mm. and sent each other scripts and kind of tried to, nothing was kind of the right fit. And then when this movie came to me, um, everybody said, you know, our, we've always wanted Tom Hanks for this part, but he's turned it down. He doesn't really want to play anymore. Real people. Uh, real people. Right. He had done a bunch. Yeah. And I said, well, I get that. That's valid. Mm. But he is perfect for this part. So let me just give it a try. And then I think within a week, he signed on and everyone was like, how did you do that? You're magic. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I swear that's the one time in my life that will ever happen that I will be able to do something like that. That's so great. What was it then like to see him in the full Mr. Rogers costume for the first time? I think we all got pretty emotional. The first camera test we did with him where we had the full outfit and the eyebrows and the wig and um, we actually did the camera test where we filmed the movie, which is in the original studio where Mr. Rogers filmed The Neighborhood in QED in Pittsburgh. Um, so it was actually a weirdly emotional experience for all of us. He walked in and everyone kind of went, oh, like, mm. almost like you felt like you were seeing a ghost, or but also that warm feeling of seeing someone you love walk into a room who's not supposed to be there. Mm. As you mentioned, you filmed in Pittsburgh in the actual studio. Yeah. Um, with, I understand, some of the crew. Yeah. With, I understand, some of the equipment that you had to have flown over. What were the biggest kind of logistical nightmare challenges in being able to achieve that? We wanted to film the parts of... Jody Lee Leipz, our incredible cinematographer, wanted... He and I had this vision that we would film the parts of the show the way they filmed them originally, which was with these old tube cameras on these giant pedestals, you know, these really big old cameras. Um, unfortunately, the real actual physical cameras that they filmed with were donated at one point to a high school in Pittsburgh, which got demolished, and the mm. cameras, we think, got demolished inside the, the high school. Mm. So we found some similar cameras in England. We had to have them brought over. Um, but there's something about the feeling of it. You know, we would look at the footage from those cameras and your heart skips a beat. It's like nostalgic, you, you go back in time. And if we, and we tried to recreate it kind of digitally, it just didn't feel right. So we were really dedicated to trying to make it look and feel the way the show really felt. That's so great. Now as people may know, this is not a biopic no. of Mr. Rogers. This is an event where he's interviewed by a magazine journalist, Tom Juneau, played by Matthew Reese. Yes. And if there's a through line uh, between your last film, Can You Ever Forgive Me, with Melissa McCarthy and Richard E. Grant, and this, it's kind of like the story of an unlikely friendship. Yeah, I think that is nice. That Odd bedfellows, kind of, that's a nice way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I think, I feel, I never know, I, I, I don't, it's hard to step back from your own career and look at it with sort of that bird's eye view of like, what type of movies do I make? Because mm. I just make something that moves me. And this particular movie at this point in my life felt like the most important thing to me. And I'm a relatively new parent when I signed on to this movie. I had a two-year-old who's now four and a half. And there's this big transformation that happens in your life when you become a parent. Um, it kind of makes you look back at your own childhood. You start to really try to become, you, you start to reflect on yourself in a major way of who am I as a person? How am I going to help another person grow up to be hopefully a good human being? Mm. Um, and it can be a painful period of time because you actually kind of look back at everything that's happened to your life and how do you want to do things differently. So that is really what the movie is about too. Matthew Reese's character has a brand new parent who's mm. in that process of re-examining his life, and um, he's a pretty cynical guy who's getting a bad reputation. 
for kind of taking down the people that he interviews. He kind of takes down people who, and writes kind of pieces that really are tough on people. And, um, and so when he's given Mr. Rogers as a subject, it doesn't make any sense for him. Um, and he's just way too cynical and jaded until to believe meet. in him until right. they meet. Um, you're about to premiere the movie, so I, not many people have seen it. No. Have you shown it to anyone in Fred Rogers' inner yes. circle? And what has the response been? Yes, we've formed a really close relationship with all of the people in Fred's circle. His wife, Joanne, Bill Eisler, who was his right-hand man for many, many years, who really helped make this movie happen, the Fred Rogers Company, other extended members of his family. Um, so we showed them the movie early on when we had just finished it, and I got the sweetest, most lovely call from Joanne and Bill on their way home with tears in their eyes just telling me how much they loved it and how moved they were. So we got the stamp of approval. Whatever happens here, it doesn't matter. They liked it. I love your attitude. I can't wait to see it. Mari, I'll Thank have a you. great premiere. Thank you Congratulations so much. in advance. Thanks, Thanks so much.